Well, guys, yes, Asus ROG and Asgard RAM made a co-branded RAM, and it's their new Bragi Asus ROG Strix DDR5 RGB white RAM. And it's what we have right here. Now, the specs are absolutely impressive, but uh, we had to expect that since it's a co-brand. And they go at 7200 MHz with a CL of just 34. So they are extremely low latency RAM meant to push high frame rates for competitive gaming. And they are obviously optimized for Asus ROG motherboards. So what we've gotten here today inside this build, which we will cover in a sec, is the best board on the market, the Z690. Asus Maximus Extreme ROG Strix board. And now, yes, it's the board from the previous gen, but uh, uh, here at the Watson PSUs, we do things on the budget because unfortunately we don't have Asus ROG sending us the motherboard. Uh, so that's what I could buy, okay? Please don't judge me. But it's supposed to be able to handle this high speed RAM uh, with no issues at all. Well, maybe a few tweaks either way. That's why we've gotten this PC, which would have been the absolute top of the line PC if you bought it like three years ago. So it has an i9-1200K and an RTX 3090 Ti, everything underwater with a custom EK and Corsair loop, which back in the day, the whole PC used to cost probably 6,000 euros. By the way, if you want to build a custom water-cooled PC, and get all the benefits that we're gonna see today. So with high performance, low temperatures and stuff, you shouldn't buy a Corsair and like EK thing, but I do have a Ryzen Tech loop, which I covered on the channel, which is actually great. It runs better, surprisingly, it feels better and it costs like one third of this. But with that aside, let's focus on the build. So all top of the line build, but uh, we are improving it today with this new Bragi ROG Strix DDR5 RAM. And we're also adding one RGB fan on the back to make it better. And we are going from one terabyte to two terabyte of NVMe Gen 4 because, you know, with times going on, uh, these are cheap. And I've had this like lying around for a while, so I think it's better we use it. So hopefully we make the PC better and get rid of those ugly Corsair Dominator Platinum. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it was a very good RAM already, but uh, the one we're putting today is hopefully better. So we're going to do all that, then do a high hard session of overclocking and then hopefully do some testing for you guys so we will see if this is actually good ram so i say first step we unbox this thing let's go okay ram unboxing time now the anime girl on the ram and on the packaging is clearly what sold me on it very premium packaging and they give you just a sketch of how the ram was designed built with some extra things, the inspiration, the piano keys is what they took it from. Then they give you a cloth, some stickers with all the serial numbers. Now, please don't steal this from me. And our actual RAM sticks, which by the way, looks absolutely stunning. Well, time to install them in the PC. Okay, so if you lift it, they give you some gloves and a bottle opener. Now I'm not sure who their target audience is, but I think it's me. I'm their target audience, guys. Just anime girls, gloves, and a bottle opener. Drop a like and a sub. <laughs> okay, so RAM install time. First off, let me turn the PC off. Probably a good idea. Okay, oh, this is also a nice RAM, but it's also heavy. But I think this is gonna be better. Okay, so the fan and the RAM are mounted, but those were the easy part. Now the a little bit harder part is gonna be the SSD because that's the issue in general with custom water cooling PCs. Basically, if you have to do upgrades, it's very tricky. Now, unfortunately, we have soft tubings, so we could also take out the GPU if needed, but uh, the SSD should be mounted here, so I should be able to get it out without too much problems. Okay. Yeah, I would not recommend that you do this, by the way, but uh, we got it. We got it out, but as you can see, we have a cable for the RGB. Now, you probably cannot see it, but uh, basically, I have to place this thing somewhere. 
yeah, we'll place it over here. And now we can go ahead. Okay, so I wanted to show it to you better. So this is our heatsink. And that's our MVME slot, which is actually empty, which is not the best, but uh, yeah. Okay, so since the other SSD is probably buried somewhere down the motherboard, we are actually putting a one terabyte drive as a secondary drive. So we're putting one plus one, AKA two terabytes. We could also use the DIM.2, which is a special RAM slot, which hosts MVME drives, but for just ease of use, we're putting this one in. Okay, and there he is just chilling. And now we can put this one back on okay so here we are doing the first boot and everything looks amazing however the pc is not booting why because we need to update the bios this is a daily reminder update your bios before you update your ram because uh, yeah things are not quite going as they should okay and as you can see by the lightning we have actually fixed it now we're installing all the drivers so let's take a look at how it looks and uh, yes it finally looks as it should in my opinion fully rgb just everything synced up from the block to the fans. So what do you say, guys? I say it's time for some performance testing. And here we are with the build finished and tested. Now, first off, I will let the footage talk and I think it does look extremely nice. This Asgard RAM is crazy good looking. Personally, I really like the anime themed aesthetic. Now I know it's not for everybody, but I love it. And I think with the addition of the back fan from Corsair and just a bit of RGB sync, now the build is truly looking its best but uh, you will have to be the ones judging that so please do let me know down in the comments and also if you like the video this far be sure to subscribe to the channel now it definitely wasn't easy to slot in that ssd in there so getting the fan in was relatively easy we had the controllers we had the free slots on the back so everything is just controlled by iq easily but that ssd guys i had to like really do some magic to try and get it out but i think it was worth now let's move forward to the usability and benchmark part first off usability and ease of locking in the XMP. Now, what we have here today is an older gen i9. So it is actually kind of expected that we were not able to lock in uh, the full XMP since again, it's an extremely aggressive speed at 7,200 megahertz with such a low latency. However, with just a few tweaks, we managed to lock it in still high and more importantly, fully stable with low latency, which sometimes is actually even better for gaming. I also have a video in which I go in depth discussing higher RAM speed, and I will link it uh, on the top here. But now, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about performance, okay? So with this RTX 3090 Ti fully underwater and this i9 paired with the high speed RAM, we managed to get 300 FPS locked in. And I am talking real locked in, like even in endgame in Apex Legends in the latest season. We've also done a little upgrade towards the video and now we have the uh, wall-mounted monitor on this desktop uh, desk, by the way. Do let me know if you like it. I have the video about the desk. But anyways, let's get back on track. Speaking about 240 hertz, on Warzone, we were able to lock in the 240 FPS all the time. Well, Warzone is Warzone. You will have dips. Even with an RTX 4090, you will still have dips, but with this PC, it's running extremely stable, extremely fluid. And we have also tested a few synthetics. As you can see, the CPU-Z score, we tested Firestrike. And all in all, it is just running smoothly. The temperatures are good, but they are not the scope of today's review. What's important is the RAM complements the build nicely for a highly competitive build. And I think with the unique aesthetic, they match very well a custom water-cooled PC like this one. Now, what we have done, tweaking-wise, Let's go over it briefly. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I'm a big advocate of undervolting rather than overclocking in today's world. And today's PC is actually one of the few PCs in which even I would recommend you overclock. But personally, I would overclock just the graphic card because it's liquid cooled. And if it's liquid cooled, you have a lot of margin. So I will actually have a full overclock tutorial for those of you with uh, extreme cooling solutions. It will be on the channel in my overclocking playlist, but we undervolted the actual CPU. So if you really don't want to spend time on this, you can just download Afterburner and unlock the slider. But what we've done is we unlocked the slider, gave it a nice plus 100 megahertz on the core, plus 1000 megahertz on the memory, roughly around there. And then we just did our usual undervolting on the i9 as I show on the channel, because this PC still has a single loop. It's in common for both the CPU and GPU. That's what also allowed us to get these results, coupled, of course, with the RAM tuning that we did. All in all, I am super happy. It just goes to show how nicely uh, the motherboard from ROG allows you to tune everything. And having a ROG-themed 
ramp that is specifically meant for this board is also really cool and it's nice to see a new player in the ramp space can i say it i have used asgard in the past but there was a bit of stagnation honestly if you liked the video please drop a like and a sub and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one bye